Hello friend, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Becky, if you are new, and today we are making a ridiculous amount of holiday appetizers or appetizers that would be perfect for the big game that's coming up, a party, a game night at your house, whatever you need an appetizer for, these recipes would be perfect. The first recipe we're starting with is garlic Parmesan chicken wings. And these are gonna take a good 45 minutes to cook. So we're gonna start this first. So I just put in black pepper, smoked paprika, garlic powder, and salt. I have two pounds of chicken wings in my bowl. And then I'm gonna coat that with just a little bit of avocado oil. I'm gonna mix all these ingredients together until the chicken is well coated. I wanna make sure I have those spices evenly distributed on all these chicken wings. This is how easy it was to prepare the chicken wings themselves. We are gonna make a garlic Parmesan butter that we're gonna to toss these chicken wings in after they're crispy out of the oven. So I'm gonna take these wings and I'm gonna put them skin side down on this cookie sheet. I'll link all these recipes that we're gonna be making today. A lot of them you could double, triple, quadruple if you needed to, if you've got a big party you're planning for. And a lot of these can be made ahead. So if you're hosting and you need to make quite a few recipes or you're busy the day you're going to a party and you're bringing an appetizer, you could prep a ton of these ahead of time and warm them up the day of the party. I have my oven preheating to 425 degrees. We're gonna get these in the oven and that's how easy it is to prep the chicken. Let's go ahead and make the garlic butter sauce to go on top of these. So we're gonna start with four tablespoons of butter, about a tablespoon of minced fresh garlic that I minced myself and froze in the freezer. Now I'm gonna zest one lemon. We're not gonna put any juice, just the zest from this lemon. We'll use this juice in another recipe in a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and melt this together. And while this is melting, we'll go to the garden and grab one more ingredient we need for this, plus other recipes later on today. Never mind, the ice storm decimated my parsley, which is okay, because I have freeze-dried parsley we can use for this appetizer and the rest of the appetizers we're making today. We haven't even been at this for five minutes, and between the garlic, the lemon zest, and the chicken in the oven, it already smells incredible in here, so I have some freeze-dried parsley from the garden. We're gonna add our Parmesan cheese. And if this does not stay completely liquid, the butter, that's not a big deal, because when we put this onto our chicken, the hot chicken coming out of the oven, it will remelt and coat that chicken beautifully. So our chicken appetizer is basically done at this point. So I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna move on to our next recipe. Look at how beautiful that is. Our next recipe is spicy lamb meatballs with homemade green goddess dressing. And I'm gonna go ahead and preheat this oven to 425 as well, because we're gonna cook our meatballs in this oven. I'm gonna make the sauce first before I make the meatballs, because I'm waiting for my oven to preheat. And I've kind of got all my ingredients out here. This is gonna come together very quickly because we're just gonna go ahead and do it right in the food processor. We have two delicious dipping sauces we're gonna make because the next recipe, or one of the recipes, we're gonna be making some coconut fried shrimp. And to go along with that, we are gonna make a mango hot sauce, a fresh mango hot sauce to dip our coconut sweet shrimp in. And it's gonna be fantastic. But first, we're gonna make our green goddess sauce. And I've got two scallions in here. And I was banking on my parsley being out there, so I didn't pick up a bunch of parsley. So I'm gonna substitute cilantro, because there's gonna be cilantro in the meatballs, so I think that that will just substitute absolutely beautiful in there. And then now here I have fresh basil. I absolutely love making fresh dipping sauces with fresh herbs, because it just elevates it absolutely deliciously. And I've already pre-washed all these herbs. And then to get some of that parsley flavor, 
I'm gonna go ahead and just add some freeze dried in here so we can get that parsley flavor, even though we didn't have fresh parsley today. I already added two scallions or green onions. Now I'm gonna add some mayo and some sour cream. That's what's gonna give us our creaminess to our dressing or dipping sauce. Along with that, we'll add black pepper, salt. And this wasn't in the original recipe, but just to add some brightness, I'm gonna add half of that lemon that we zested earlier for the chicken. You can see I got a lemon seed in there. We're gonna get that out. I'm gonna pulse this together. Oh my goodness, look at how creamy and rich that looks. Let's give this a taste test. That is so good. It doesn't need anything. We're gonna keep it just like that. Now, if you don't like mayonnaise or you don't like sour cream, you could do 100% mayonnaise or 100% sour cream, or you could do Greek yogurt. I like a combination of the two. I think it adds a good texture and it adds a good flavor balance between the two. But if you're you know, not a mayonnaise fan, just use sour cream or vice versa or Greek yogurt. You could use this as a salad dressing, as a sauce to put over nachos. There's so many uses you could do with this. And if you wanna impress your loved ones with a yummy sauce, make a fresh herb dipping sauce. It's so delicious, so easy, and it'll take your dish over the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this covered and get this chilling while we make the meatballs. Before we can make the meatballs, we need to rotate our chicken wings. So I'm just gonna take some tongs and flip them so they're skin side up. And this way that skin is gonna get nice and crispy and delicious. The spicy lamb meatballs with the green goddess dressing obviously calls for lamb. Well, when I went shopping, I could not find ground lamb at the three grocery stores I went to. So I'm gonna substitute beef and it is gonna be just as delicious. And then when I was rereading the recipe for the meatballs, I realized I forgot the anchovies for the dipping sauce. And that is totally okay because the Dipping sauce is meant for the meatballs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put my anchovies in the meatballs instead of in the sauce. I have one pound of ground beef here. I'm gonna add breadcrumbs to that, along with chopping up the rest of this cilantro that we didn't use for the sauce. And we're gonna get this into our meatballs. I've been asked a few times, how come I leave my mistakes in, like forgetting the anchovies in the sauce? And it's because I'm just showing how you can adapt and overcome. I could easily dump my sauce back into my mixer and add the anchovies and call that good, but I just cleaned my mixer for the next recipe. And so I want to, not mixer, my food processor. I already cleaned it because we're gonna need it for the habanero mango sauce. And because the meatballs were intended for the anchovies, I can just go ahead and put that right into the meatball and that's gonna be perfectly fine. A lot of times when cooking, if you make mistakes, you can adjust and overcome those mistakes. Unless it's completely burnt to a crisp, usually there's some coming back from whatever the mistake might be. Unless it's baking, sometimes you can't come back from baking mistakes. So here I have a shallot. I'm mincing very, very finely. And it's a pretty potent one. And we're gonna get this into our meatball mixture. And I can smell my chicken. I think my chicken is about ready to come out of the oven. We need to toss our meatballs in with the Parmesan mixture. So I just need two of these anchovy fillets. I can never use a whole tin of these when I open them. So what I like to do is lay them out individually, flash freeze them, and then next time I need them, I can just take one or two out of the freezer. They add just a really yummy umami flavor. They're not gonna taste fishy in this, but if you don't like 
the idea of using anchovies, no problem. You could substitute a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, which is basically fermented anchovies, molasses, and red onion. And you're gonna get that umami flavor without actually having to use anchovy fillets. So the idea is to get this minced up pretty fine. You can actually buy this in a paste form too, if you want. So we're gonna get our two little fillets into our meatball mixture. The next thing I'm gonna add is fresh minced garlic, two tablespoons of harissa, which is a chili paste, hot chili pepper paste with herbs and spices. It's so delicious. I'm gonna add salt, parsley, cumin, coriander, smoked paprika, pepper, and ground fennel, which I only have whole fennel, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use a mortar and pestle and grind this up to a fine powder. Oh my goodness, that smells amazing. If you've never fresh ground your herbs before, it really does bring it to the next level. We're gonna get that into our meatballs. And the last ingredient is one egg. I'm gonna get some gloves on and we're just gonna go ahead and mix this up by hand because this is gonna be the easiest way to get everything well incorporated. I wish you could smell these meatballs. They smell delicious. And I'm gonna make them a little bit on the small side because these are an appetizer and we're gonna have quite a few appetizers. So you want them kind of bite-sized so people can try a bunch of different things. These meatballs turn out so delicious. They're savory and a little bit of heat and all the herbs in there and shallots, so yummy. And the dipping sauce, perfect balance. And a meatball is one of those things that you can flavor so many different ways. It's almost endless between what type of ground meat you choose and the herbs and the sauce. And they are definitely something that you can make for a huge crowd or make a couple different flavors or make them in advance. You can either take them at this point and pop them in the fridge and bake them the day of the party, or you could pop these in the freezer and pull them out and bake them the day of your party so that they're fresh and hot and delicious. And I love making meatballs. I think they are a crowd pleaser and you can really customize them and make them so many different ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the oven now. Our chicken wings are crispy and golden, so we're gonna get them into a bowl. The skin is perfectly crisp. Now we're gonna take our Parmesan herb garlic butter and get that over top of our chicken wings. Oh my goodness, when that hot butter hit those chicken wings, we're gonna stir this until the butter and the Parmesan cheese coats those wings. This smells like one of the best things I've ever made before. So let's get this plated up. These are something you would definitely wanna make right before your guests arrive because hot chicken wings are so delicious. And so if you were making say the meatballs in these, you could throw the meatballs in a crock pot, keep those warm, and then bake off your chicken wings so they are ready when your guests arrive. This is the first time I've ever made chicken wings before and this has me thinking of all the amazing ways you could make this. I was just thinking I could take that harissa and make a nice spicy peppery glaze, bake that in the oven, and then when it comes out, drizzle it with honey and chipotle and oh my goodness, that would be fantastic too. But for now, let's go ahead and give one of these Parmesan chicken wings a try. What's amazing to me is I can smell that little bit of lemon zest we put on here and it just brightens the whole thing up. This is incredible. So easy, incredibly rich, the skin is crispy and you could make a ton of those in the oven at one time and have them hot when your guests are coming out of the oven. So delicious, there's so many ways you could make these. If you've never made chicken wings before, I highly recommend it because that was easy. 
and the richness and depth of flavor and crunchy and savory and chickeniness of these wings is incredible. So now we have our meatballs in the oven. Let's move on to another really incredible appetizer. Here's what we need for the next recipe. We are gonna make pizza pockets using puff pastry. We're gonna make pepperoni pizza pockets. So I've got my puff pastry here that's thawed. So it's been in the refrigerator overnight and I need to roll this out a little bit more. So I'm just gonna roll it out on my cutting board. You can make these as big or as small as you want. From one sheet, we will get four little pizza pockets. Now this appetizer or hors d'oeuvre if I was to bring this to a potluck where I knew there was going to be a bunch of different appetizers and hors d'oeuvres served, or if I was having a party where I was serving a bunch of different things and I wanted people to be able to kind of nibble and have, you know, a few of each little thing and not get full before the main dinner, if dinner was going to be served, I would make these twice as small. And so one sheet would make eight little mini pizza pockets instead of four pizza pockets. And this is the type of recipe where you could really just let your imagination go wild and stuff them and fill them with whatever, even if you had, you know, say some ham and cheese, you could do ham and cheese, you could do any pizza topping flavor, really your imagination could just really run wild with these. So here I'm cutting these the same size as the last one because the ones that are on the cookie sheet currently, you know, one of those is gonna be the bottom of the little pizza pocket and one is gonna be the top. So I tried to roll out the puff pastry about the same size and cut it to about the same size so that it will fit on each other. I want my puff pastry to stay really cold while I prep the rest of the ingredients. So I'm gonna get this onto this baking sheet and then we're gonna pop this in the fridge while we prep the rest of the ingredients. Now you could fill these with whatever you want. I have some green onions and then I've got pepperoni and mozzarella cheese along with homemade pizza sauce. You could do ham and cheese with mustard. I want these to be like the pizza pockets you buy at the store. So I'm actually gonna take my pepperoni and slice them and then dice them into little chunks. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with my mozzarella cheese because that's how the cheese is in the store-bought pizza pockets. It's not shredded, it's diced in little cubes. All right, we've got all of our prep done. We also have some Parmesan cheese and our pizza sauce. What I'm gonna do is put a little bit of pizza sauce on every other piece of puff pastry. I don't want to overfill. Now I'm gonna take our mozzarella cubes and put that down next. I have my oven preheated to 400 degrees, so I reduced the temperature just a little bit from what we were doing earlier. I'm gonna put some of our pepperonis. And then to add some brightness, just maybe a couple green onions in each one. I'm notorious for overstuffing, so let's see if we can get these closed up. So I'm gonna put the top on, pinch the edges, Now 
And I had two extra pieces over here. That's why I have these here. If you wanted these to have a perfect edge, you could go ahead and cut the excess so that there is a perfect edge. But I don't mind a little bit of rustic, so I'm just gonna take a fork and crimp the edge. You could also make sweet ones of these. You could either get some store-bought pie filling and fill these with store-bought pie filling or make your own pie filling or even just use jam, whatever kind of jam you have. And you'd be making kind of like a little sweet ham pie as opposed to a savory pizza pocket. Our meatballs are done. So I wanna get these out of the oven. And they are beautiful and they smell absolutely incredible. I'm gonna turn this oven off. The last step is to get an egg wash onto these pizza pockets. This had me thinking, you could also do a sweetened cream cheese and I'll put some cream cheese in there along with some pie filling and have like a cheese danish. Now that would be very delicious as well. This is what is gonna give these pizza pockets a beautiful golden color. Lastly, I'm gonna sprinkle some sesame seeds on the top. And into the oven they go. Not only do these make a really nice appetizer or, or hors d'oeuvre, they make a really good lunch. They're so fast, they'd make a fun like after school snack or something like that, because then you could let individual people choose what they wanna put inside their pizza pocket. Now an hors d'oeuvre like this, if you wanted to make this in advance, you could make up the meatballs and freeze the meatballs or just make them and shape them and then bake them right before your guests come over so they can have hot, warm, yummy, delicious meatballs. I did end up taking those meatballs and just patting them on a paper towel and then I got them on the serving dish. And after I did that, it was time to take our pizza pockets out of the oven and look how beautiful these are. You can see how they would work really well this size or you could even cut them in half and make twice as many with the same amount of puff pastry and get more kind of like bite size or like one or two bite size as opposed to these bigger ones. But these turned out absolutely beautiful and they did not even take five-ish minutes or so to make up. Three recipes down. The next recipe is one that we're gonna pop in the oven and then the fifth one we're gonna cook on the stove. So let's get the one in the oven so that it can be cooking while we do the one on the stove. First, we're gonna make a butter mixture on the stove. I'm gonna turn this up to high. I'm gonna get a half a cup of butter in our pot, along with mustard, this is Dijon, minced onion, poppy seeds, and Worcestershire sauce. We're gonna let that melt and come together. I've got a box of Hawaiian rolls that I'm gonna slice as evenly down the middle as I can, trying to keep the rolls intact. I don't really want them to break apart because we are gonna make ham and cheese sliders. So I'm gonna set this over here. I'm gonna put my baking dish here. I'm gonna use one with sides so that our butter mustard mixture doesn't just fall off the sandwiches and I'm gonna crinkle this up. Here we have our butter, poppy seed, onion, mustard mixture. I'm gonna put half of it on the bottom and I'm gonna try to evenly distribute it. Now 
Now I have Swiss cheese. You could use whatever kind of cheese and whatever kind of meat you want. You get really creative with this. But I'm gonna use Swiss cheese and thinly cut ham to make these sliders. I do end up taking the ham and kind of putting like one piece of ham kind of like crinkled up on each one of the buns so that they're easier to cut into. And these turn out so incredibly well. I'm sure you have seen these before. This is not, you know, a revolutionary recipe, but it's the first time I've ever made these before. And this is your sign if you haven't made them to go make these sliders because they were incredibly delicious and incredibly easy. So I do take the rest of the butter and pour it over the top of these buns. If you needed yourself a really quick dinner idea, you could throw this together with a side salad and you have yourself a dinner, most people I think would be pretty excited to eat. So now let's make our coconut shrimp with our mango dipping sauce. This next recipe is the one I'm looking forward to the most out of all the recipes, and that is our coconut shrimp with our mango habanero sauce. I couldn't find habaneros at the store yesterday, I could find a jalapeno, so we're gonna make a mango jalapeno sauce, and I think it's gonna be just as delicious. So I have frozen mangoes in there, one jalapeno, and I'm gonna go ahead and keep the peels on because we're gonna use sweetened coconut when we make our coconut, and it's gonna have some sweetness to it. So we, I want the heat from the jalapeno to counterbalance that. I just added a little bit of sugar, and we're gonna blend this up before we add the rest of the ingredients. Turn that off, I'm gonna add salt, the juice of two limes, smoked paprika, black pepper, curry powder, and a little bit of cayenne pepper. Now this is a creamy sauce, so we are gonna add mayonnaise as the creamy element. Again, if you wanted to use yogurt, that would be good, or sour cream. I'm gonna mix this one more time and then we'll give it a taste test and adjust for seasonings as needed. I've never made a sauce like this before, and I've been really looking forward to it. Wow. I wanna go in again because that is fantastic. I do think it needs just a little bit more salt and believe it or not, that jalapeno, I don't think had any heat to it. I think it needs a little bit of heat. I think I'm gonna add some salt. And then for the heat, I have some homemade sriracha sauce that I just reused this bottle. And this stuff has quite a bit of heat to it. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that. Mix that together and try that. I have a new spoon. I think I may have forgot to add salt because that right there is one of the best sauces I think I've ever made. The curry, the jalapeno, the mango, yum. With coconut shrimp, divine. I just had the thought this on a fish taco would be incredible so good okay let's make our fried shrimp we are gonna make a honey sugar glaze for our shrimp so I've got honey and sugar that we're gonna turn on the stove we're gonna put the zest of a lemon and lime in here and now I'm gonna do the zest of a lime Now I'm gonna juice both the lemon and lime that I just zested into our pot. And now I'm gonna put black pepper in here. We're gonna stir this together until it all melts and kind of bubbles, dissolves and thickens up a little bit. While this is going, we're gonna get our dredge and things ready for the shrimp. This looks beautiful, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. 
our sandwiches are done and smell and look just perfect. They're ooey and gooey and savory. So I'm gonna set this here and let this cool a little bit. Oh yeah, yummy. Now we're gonna make our dredge for our shrimp. First, we're gonna have a dry dredge, which is gonna be flour. Then we're gonna have a wet one, which I have some water in here. I'm gonna add some flour into there. I'm gonna add two eggs into here as well. And then in here, we're gonna add equal parts panko breadcrumbs and sweetened coconut shreds. I need to season this with some pepper and some salt. I'm gonna mix these together. Oh, we need baking powder in this as well. I almost forgot the baking powder. Oh. I'm gonna mix this until the flour and water and egg are all beaten together. So here is my dredge. I've got my flour, my wet mixture, my coconut and panko. And then these are Argentinian red shrimp. So they're not cooked even though they're red. They are peeled and their veins are taken out. So now we need to just get our pan ready. We're gonna do a shallow pan fry on these. And I'm gonna use avocado oil because it has a high heat point. And we wanna heat this to about a hundred, not a hundred, 325 degrees or so. And then I need to get a pan out so as soon as they're done frying, we have somewhere to put them. While my oil is heating up, I do have a piece of coconut in there as kind of a test to see when that starts to bubble. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of my shrimp dredged. So when the oil's hot, we can get some shrimp cooking right away. These were shrimp that I purchased that were completely frozen when I got them and I did thaw them in the refrigerator overnight. They thawed very, very quickly in the refrigerator overnight. And then before I am putting them in the flour, you can see on that plate, I took the shrimp and I put them on a paper towel and I patted them dry so that the flour would stick better to them and then the batter would stick well to them and then our coconut panko mixture would stick well to them. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get quite a few of them battered up so that we can get them into the oil. So our oil is hot, so I'm gonna go ahead and get some of these shrimp right in there. This is a pan fry. I probably could have put a little bit more oil in the pan. This is not a technique that I have a ton of experience with. I am having fun kind of putting myself in situations where I'm learning new cooking techniques and skills. And like frying is definitely something I don't have a ton of experience with. But for how well these turned out, I am excited that I'm getting more comfortable with this technique. These shrimp were absolutely delicious and they weren't hard, but there definitely was quite a few steps to them. So I would say compared to the other recipes we've made, appetizer recipes, those were all really, really easy. And those could all be prepped in advance and so that you could have a ton of people for a party and you could make a ton of them and it wouldn't be so labor intensive. These were a little bit more labor intensive, but they were worth it. They were absolutely delicious, but this would definitely be something that would be harder to make a ton of these for a big crowd if you were having a crowd because of just the amount of time it takes to, you know, dredge all the shrimp and then get them cooked. Now you can see I did, when the first round was cooking, I was able to get all of the shrimp battered up and the coconut mixture on it. And so that did make it a little bit easier. And I did halfway through have to add a little bit more water to it because, not water, a little bit more oil to it because I ran out of oil in the pan, or at least I didn't have quite enough to do a good pan fry. 
So now that I've got them all cooked up, I'm gonna put them into this bowl and I'm gonna pour over our honey citrus mixture and then I'm gonna to toss the shrimp in this honey citrus mixture. This is what took it over the top. And these in a tortilla with that mango salsa that we, or like creamy sauce we made with some coleslaw would make the best fish tacos you've ever had in your entire life. They were definitely something that I'm excited that I tried because this is not anything I've ever made anything like this before. And it was incredible. So now that we've got them all cooked up, I'm gonna go ahead and get them plated up on this platter with our mango dipping sauce. Friend, look at this shrimp. So we need to try the shrimp with the sauce. Oh my goodness, look at that. Cheers. I've been so looking forward to this ever since I found this recipe. Mm. The crunch on that was so fantastic. I'm not like the hugest shrimp fan, but the combination of the coconut with that honey glaze with the citrus and that sauce. I mean, you put that sauce on anything, chicken, that could even be a really good salad dressing like on a coleslaw. So good, so happy with that. Now I wanna try one of these meatballs with our green goddess sauce. I am such a sauce fan that it's been so fun making all these sauces today. It has the perfect balance of that herbaceous note that you want with that richness of the meat and the hint of spice. You do not taste anchovies in that at all, but if that's something you don't wanna add, skip that. But it really kind of balances and rounds out that flavor and it is fantastic. And we got some absolutely incredible, delicious appetizers made up today. I am so happy. I love getting in the kitchen and experimenting and trying new recipes. And that's what today was, was just trying a ton of new recipes that would be perfect for a holiday, the big game that's coming up, football season, birthdays, pizza night, game night, probably not pizza night because <laughs> you usually don't make a bunch of appetizers before pizza night. But it was just a lot of fun getting in the kitchen and experimenting. Thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I so appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.